I got nipples, Luke. Can you milk me? How's it feel to be back recording the podcast once again? God damn. Feels fucking good. We can't even say what number episode it is, really. Nope. We've been just mixing them up lately, you know? So y'all don't know when we recorded them? Nope. And you never will. Assholes. Sorry. What you gonna do about it? You Nothing. gonna go cry to mommy? Oh, th- the only thing they can do is cry on our subreddit, which they do constantly. They go, they go, they go. <laughs> you know? <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, you need uh you need you need someone to change your diapy? Little bitch. I just heard a big thud. Yeah, that was a big ass thud outside. What was that? That sounded like an angry Amazon I'm driver. I'm gonna go check and I can update you. Sure, sure, okay. go check. It sounded like a big like a- like an Amazon delivery truck and the driver's really Ooh, pissed off uh, about something. Update. Okay. You don't want to be here for that? Okay. Yeah, so, as many of you know, uh, recently Ryan and I, um, you know, we were in the process of adopting a, a little boy. Beautiful little boy. Beautiful little boy. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, Aryan, beautiful, beautiful blue eyes, but... Just the next door neighbors. Oh, just next door neighbors? Anyway, the uh, apparently when you would try to adopt in the state of California, they do a little something called a background check, uh, which I think is a bit of governmental overreach, just in my opinion. What about what happened to the to the days of privacy? Right? Oh, they have to know everything about my 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 life if I want to adopt a child. Fuck off, okay? I I'm a, I'm an adult. I'm allowed to have my own private life and my own private desires. Desires are not a part of this situation. That's a completely separate. I'm just saying. I'm allowed to own a shotgun at the age of 18. How am I not able to to have a child at the age of 28? Mm -hmm. That's a whole decade difference. And and you know, it's just just disappointing. It is disappointing more than anything because the background check came back with a bunch of. They must have mixed up names. They must have complete. Anyway, it it just honestly is just kind of just disappointing, I would say. Yeah. Uh, to say the least. We're heartbroken. We just know that all of you are. But uh, we promise we'll be looking into it. Um, but I think, I think the best thing you can do is move forward uh, and live your lives. And for us to live our lives uh, like nothing happened. Yeah. So with that, is there any recent world news that, that you want to discuss, Matt? Well, the FBI raid that we conducted on President Trump's house was mm-hmm. a success. Pound it for that one. That's right. Um, what else? Uh, you you showed me the rehearsal. I did. I showed you the rehearsal. I mean, that's big news. Yeah, that's big news. I've been I've been I've been wanting you to watch that one. It's a I showed you the first episode. For those of you who don't know, the rehearsal is uh, Nathan Fielder's newest show. You might know him from uh, Nathan for You, or if you're as, Canadian, as well as um, you might know him from This Hour as Twenty Two Minutes, or that, or you might know him from. Uh, the what was that fucking movie called? The Room. Oh, the Disaster Artist. The Disaster Artist. I he's, forgot he was, he in, was that. in the Disaster Artist briefly. Yeah, um, yeah. No, he's a, he's our favorite comedian of all time. He's, he's your favorite comedian too. Yeah, I'm saying that for you. But he has a new show. Basically, the premise is that he, from what I've gathered, is he takes people that have something they want to accomplish, and usually these situations are anxiety inducing because you don't know what the outcome is so he in a studio sets up whether it's uh, a bar or a house sets up a place where they can begin to learn and come through with like the interaction they want to have uh, comfortably like they rehearse it several times before actually doing the final thing in the first episode it was about a, a man who uh, felt bad because he lied about getting his master's degree and has lied about that for 12 years to his uh, debate group friends. His trivia friends who and were so all very smart. So Nathan rebuilt the bar in, in a studio and had him rehearse it like 13 plus times. With, with an actress that plays his friend. And they <laughs> yeah. go for every possible outcome. It's a fantastic show. But that doesn't even begin to explain the lengths that the show goes to kind of... Uh, engineer these situations to happen. Yeah, like just for uh, just for meeting him for the first time, Nathan had uh, people go into his house disguised as like people with the gas company because <laughs> they're really scanning. Leak. Yeah, and then and then uh, he rebuilt inch for inch the guy's house just just to practice introducing himself to him. It's crazy. The budget's insane. HBO's got a got a wild budget for little Nathan. 
Uh, but it's great. And you ha- you still haven't seen the second, third, fourth, fifth, or sixth No, I've episode. only seen the first one, which I want to see the rest of the episodes with you. Don't You're you- about to see the last one this Friday. I bet you if, if I wasn't dependent on you to watch them, I could probably binge it before Friday and watch it with you Friday. You can do that? Okay. You can watch it on your own. I just like watching it with you. I know. It's I, I like I like seeing your reaction. Your reaction is is fantastic. Well, we could binge it. I know you're down to binge it. Oh, I'm you super wanted, down you to binge wanted it. You wanted to watch another episode, but I, 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 I had to go home. The uh, the Lego was calling. Yeah, it and was. And the Justin. Yeah. And your dog was also calling. Yes. I understand that, you know. I love building Legos. You got to build some Legos, man. And Legos I, are really I, fun. I've been trying to do a set a week. And I was just behind on that particular one. No, that's okay. That's okay. I mean, that's a big one. It's the what the Death Star. Yep, that's a big one. Yeah, that's yeah. A, that's a that's a pretty big deal. And uh, we also, I guess, on the on the subject of of television, we just uh, finished Better Call Saul. It ended. Fuck it's yes, done. it's all done. We've talked we've talked about it since this podcast started. You know, we've talked about like, oh, what do you think is gonna happen in season two? Should we do a let's just talk about it? And if you don't want to hear us talk about Better Call Saul or you don't want it spoiled in any way, then is it skip to this time code? Is that what we do, or is it like a? I think I think it's safe to say skip till the after next the after next, the ad break. After the we'll ad probably break. talk about it for a hot minute. Yeah. Um, but there's plenty more where this came from. So so so, darlings, please go ahead and the ad break's easier to see on YouTube. It's marked, Spotify. yeah. It's 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 like on YouTube. It's marked in section, and you can see it. So you might have to go like. Then when Saw slits his throat, and you know, yeah. Well, go ahead and skip. Um, yeah, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. A lot of time machine uh, discussion. You know, yeah. it was a big theme. You know, the time machine on on what what would you do if you could go By back H. in time? G. Wells, as we saw eventually. Uh, overall, let's just get right out of the gate. Let what do you think of the finale episode, and what do you think of the series in full now that it's done? Okay, finale episode. I loved it. I thought it was great. I thought it wrapped things up nicely. It was it was very heartbreaking. Entire series, I think, fantastic. Yeah. Now, now it's all wrapped up, and I know where it went and where it was going, and we're at that destination. I think it was great. I I really loved it. It was it was a great show. Uh, those writers and actors and actresses are. I'll give them a chef's kiss out of 10. Um, I thought that it was interesting in the finale uh, that they had Bob Odenkirk do the whole, that whole like transgender. uh, The rant. Yeah. In in the courtroom. That was, I didn't think that really added much. Especially for the direction of kind of like this scene was meant to be like he's getting his comeuppance. He's making things right. He's making things, yeah, he's making things right. For him to go off on that tirade, while he is doing the right thing, not he kind of steers when he starts to talk about the issues, right, right, of, and uh, the it, transgender community. It was definite. I mean, I get the show. Takes They're play. not the issue. He has, he has is Saul or Jimmy McGill has issues with them, right. And and it's funny just because they didn't express that any time earlier in the show. It was really safe for like that that one kind of like almost final scene. Yeah. Um, but I, I do think, uh, I, I guess I'll give him a pass in the sense of, you know, what it's supposed to take place in 2011. Different time. Different time, you know. Yeah. So it's a decade ago, you know. Saul Goodman wasn't up to date on, on the trans rights issue. Um, some of the stuff he said was really abhorrent to me. But overall, I think that it, it didn't necessarily taint the, the finale too much for me. Um, I don't think the finale is the strongest episode in the last season. Definitely much not. Much like how the finale in Breaking Bad isn't the strongest episode in season five, but uh, it is definitely a strong episode. I think I'm still kind of feeling it out of like how I feel about the ending kind of being a more positive depiction of the hero. Like Pete, like um, Kim, you know, saw the light and yes, there might have a civil suit coming in their way. might have their life ruined, but ultimately they're, they're okay with their self. They kind of like had a, baptism in terms of their baptism being relinquishing all their kind of guilt over everything that happened. Not saying it's completely gone, but giving that confession and telling Howard's wife the truth. Yeah. And Jim, uh, Jimmy also doing the same thing um, in this episode. It was, it, it's not something I expected from like the writers of Breaking Bad to, I thought, I thought Saul was going to be Saul until he died. I didn't expect him to like have a turnaround of like you know what I'm gonna be a good guy 
and then die a good man in prison type of ending. Yeah. That's he, probably one thing I wasn't expecting. I wasn't expecting like a redemption, honestly. And the redemption just kind of like happened. Yeah. We got we got sold. We did get sold. We got sold by the writers, dude. We got we got slipping Jimmy. But it was all for love. I'm guessing is kind of like the Absolutely, I, yeah. Like he uh it wasn't he wasn't doing it to like save uh Kim, but he even said in the episode, you know, there's no coincidence that Kim is here. You know, I I fed you a bunch of bullshit so that it would entice Kim to show up to see, to see it happen or to see what I say. Then, like, he comes clean. So I'm guessing once he heard Kim come clean, that's where he thought about it more and was like, because we thought he was going to get mad and try to fuck Kim over. I know. But I was like, I, I was like, oh, no, what, what's he going to do? The opposite happened. He's like, oh, shit. Yeah. Well. And he goes back, goes back from Saul to Jimmy. Yep. And it's Saul, it's Saul done. Well, he's still Saul in jail. He never gets to escape I noticed the that. Saul I noticed Goodman that. Uh, name. Yeah, I really, I did, I did really like the final shot uh, of the show where the camera's like pulling away from the uh, prison yard. And you, you mentioned see- something that I agree with is that I wish that they had like an an actual song that ended it off because yeah, the, the show's so famous with like you, its use of me. It's it's known for its use of music and it's specifically its use of music through montage specifically right. too. I mean those writers use great music. So it, I thought that honestly my my complaint with the episode is that I wish that the the final the the, the ending had used like a song instead of just like an original plucky twangy uh Dave Porter track. <laughs> yeah. Uh but it like I honestly think that like they could have picked a really good song for it and it would have hit a little bit harder. But maybe they purposely did. Maybe maybe they maybe they were like, let's do it this way. I mean, they obviously had the reasons. I still think it was good. I still thought it was like nice, and I didn't think the music was bad. I just personally wish, from a stylistic standpoint, that they had they had done one of their classic. What would Breaking Bad be if it hadn't ended with a uh, Baby Blue? Do you think there's a fault in in Better Call Saul? Like, it's great watching it because you and I watched Breaking Bad and loved it, and we want to know more about it. But do you think? It, there's a fault in terms of that it really can't rely on itself. It can't stand on its own because with that whole ep- with that whole last episode, they can be vaguely talking about whatever he's talking about Walter White and all this stuff. But yeah. like that being like the crux of everything coming down on him, where he's getting upwards of a uh, hundred like life plus ninety years was the starting thing. I think it was like life plus a ludicrous amount of years. He ended with eighty six. Thank God. Yeah, only eighty six. Um, but I don't know. I, I I couldn't imagine being an outsider being able. That's what to I was fully thinking. Get everything. I I think also like they wanted to stay on some, but they also know. I think that like the fandom and everything like they they know that pretty much everyone that's watching that show has seen Breaking Bad. A so, large majority. I saw someone I think on our subreddit mention or in the comments. It was somewhere where they mentioned that how they watched through Better Call Saul. Like, they're watching Better Call Saul first and then Breaking Bad. It's an interesting way to do it. And I want to know, like, a person's perspective of, like, just watching Better Call Saul having, like... Because they're not going to have, the like, the ooh moments that you and I had through it. Yeah, Like, Tuco probably being the first, like, Yeah, that was the first one, yeah. Um, You know who we never saw? We never saw, uh... What's his name? Kubi? Bill Barr. Oh, shit. Not Bill Barr. Bill Burr. Bill Burr. Bill Barr is the attorney general. We never saw Bill Burr. We didn't. I was I was laying in bed last night. I'm like we saw Huel, we saw Francesca. We didn't see we didn't see him. I wonder we if they saw Eman- What's his name? What what, what was his uh, what was his uh, Crazy Eight? Yeah, we saw Crazy Eight. We that saw was an earlier season. Emilio. Yep. We saw we saw a lot of Breaking Bad characters. I think that the show can stand on its own. I think that just in the fat last few episodes, they really, especially the last one, they really relied on Breaking Bad. But also, at the same time, the way that they wrote the story before they made the spinoff was that you know he's escaping from Breaking Bad so for them to catch up to that and then be at that point in the show it's like that is that's why he's being hunted down by the FBI and stuff so it's because of the stuff we've already seen but do you think that it's like I I think they did a good job explaining they didn't show too much of that time frame and I'm wondering if like if it's because of my bias of seeing Breaking Bad and seeing it it's like very important to know if that like biases my opinion or if like a person watching Better Call Saul is like no I got it he worked for he eventually like got into some awful shit after everything happened with uh, Howard and Kim he even said uh, I don't know I'm actually curious I, wor- I work close with him he like 
Jimmy explains like verbatim like what he and Walt did, like what he was to Walt. So th there's no like reading between the lines someone would have to do. But I do think that it's like an, a large amount of specific context in terms of the crimes that he did commit where we see the jump in uh, like we see the jump in time from when he becomes Saul Goodman and Kim's no longer around. I think that's my favorite moment in the entire series. Yeah. Was the time jump from Jimmy to Saul Goodman. I still think my favorite episode of the, of the season. I don't, I don't know if I can, I'd have to watch it again to probably I would pick too. my favorite episode of the series. But it would have to be something with Chuck. My favorite episode, definitely. My favorite episode of the season was the Waterworks. I really that one that was one. really, really good. I think, I really liked that one. Um, but for some reason, like, uh, the one where it does the time skip, where mm -hmm. they break up and then they do the time skip, like that, the breakup scene, followed by that, like, gut punch time skip, followed by just that in sequence of him as Saul Goodman for the first time. Yeah. Like or like modern Saul Goodman from the Breaking Bad era, that was like what really fucking like hit me the hardest. Like, because the breakup scene was already so fucking emotional and sad, and but it immediately just rips you out of it and throws you into like just the aftermath. That's what I love, really love about this show is that like during the breakup scene, the I don't know. There's there's too many shows where a breakup scene kind of follows the usual dialogue of like I don't know like kind of boring just like how could you do this to me what have you done like that type of shit but I feel like the the dialogue that the writers worked on is like they really do care about their characters and it shows their writing because the characters come through the characters act like themselves and that's what's like really heartbreaking is like you believe that these are like two people that exist that are just really coming to a boiling point and like just coming to an end and you don't they do a good job of investing you in the characters. Mm -hmm. And that, that breakup scene had some really good gut punches. My favorite gut punch, though, it was delivered by Kim in an earlier season where she basically, uh, Jimmy and her are having an argument on top of the parking garage. And he's like, oh, yeah, that's right. Kick a man while he's down. And she's like, Jimmy, you are always down. Yeah. That's my favorite, like, kind of like that Kim gave, I think. God, I hope she gets an, an, uh, an Emmy. She's my favorite character in the show. She's amazing. I loved her. She's amazing. Like, and the way they portrayed her, like, in the time skip after Breaking Bad was really good. Yeah. I didn't know, I didn't recognize her at first. I didn't think, I, I was like, oh, who's this? And I was like. <gasps> at first I thought uh, in the last episode, Marie was Rhea, like, from the back. And then when she turned into yeah. Marie, I was like, oh, okay. Because they both had dark hair. I was very excited to see Marie. I was like, whoa, what the fuck? I was not expecting to see Marie. Yeah, that was, like, the last person I was they expecting They could have brought, like, Skylar or. Because Hank and Gomez were in a episode prior. Yeah, I thought they were going to be big characters. But they really just kind of just threw they showed them up in. once. Yeah, and left. I like that though. Uh, yeah, it's it's weird though. I wonder what kind of strings they're pulling behind the scenes. Because Twitter suggested that I follow Betsy Brandt last week, actress that plays Marie. Think about it. Little weird, huh? Why do they suggest that all of a sudden? Is she on cameo, probably. Like Hank Schrader is. Walt. <laughs> That's such a fucking classic video where he calls Walt a sussy baka. <laughs> well, now I want to, after after seeing Better Call Saul, I haven't watched Breaking Bad since it ended. It's time. I'm about to restart it. Which was 2013? It. Yep. Okay. So almost a decade. So yeah, it's time Dude. for me to give it a rewatch. Oh my God, I'm so excited for you. Because like, I know all I the big I had moments. that much space between the last time. Last time I saw it was actually well, I started rewatching it uh, like two months ago. And I got through the first season. But I'm going to just rewatch it again. Uh... I don't know. I love. I can do. I can rewatch that show so many times. It's so good. That's the thing. It's like I remember all the big moments, but I'm excited for the um, the shit in between, like all the character building and stuff. Yeah, I had forgotten so much, like so many of the smaller plot lines, and I'm like, damn, this is so good. Like, what, itches, what about Peekaboo man. Kid? Uh, they saw them. Yep, Peekaboo Kids. They're twins. Yeah, but in the show, it was what? yeah. It's because of child labor laws, huh? Yeah, that, that's why it's really awesome and great for a studio when they hire twins like they did with Mary-Kate and Ashley for Full House, um, like they did with, uh, uh, what, what are their names, the Sprouse twins for Big Daddy, for from Adam Sandler's mm -hmm. Big Daddy. Because, you know, because of those pesky child labor laws, kids can only work so much at once. So as soon as one's done, you go, whoop, swap them in with his twin. Yep. Easy, easy peasy, peasy, lemon, lemon squeezy. squeezy. I said it first. I tried to I tried to speed up to match it at the same time. Mm -hmm. I I didn't think of it as a race. I thought we were we were um, 
we were cooperating. Well, now I feel like an asshole. Same goal. I saw it as a race, and now you know, in hindsight, I I shouldn't have viewed it that way. That was disrespectful to you as a friend, on my behalf, and I'm sorry. Do you mind if we um, we talk about this over the ad break? Is I mean, is there really more to talk about with this? I thought. Do you have more to say about it? I, I, what? Let's just go to ads. It's not a big. It's not that big of a deal. We're going to ads. I said I was sorry. We're going to I said ads. that I was. We're sorry. just gonna go to I ads. Said we I, go to ads. Okay. Every, Let's go to ads. Luke, cue up those ads. Lately, I've been listening to a lot of my own podcast, the Super Mega Cast, and it's been great. One reason it's been great to listen to, well, it's because I use my Raycon wireless earbuds to do it. Raycon's everyday earbuds look, feel, and sound better than ever. With optimized gel tips for the perfect in-ear fit, these earbuds are so comfortable and they will not budge. Trust me. Raycons give you 8 hours of playtime and a 32-hour battery life. Raycons are priced just right. You get the quality audio at half the price of other premium audio brands. It's no wonder Raycons Everyday Earbuds have over 50,000 five-star reviews. And I'm one of them. I, I love putting my, my Raycons in, listening to my, my, my own podcast while I skateboard down Sunset Boulevard. And Matt listens to, I don't know, the sp sp space videos or something on Cotton Eye Joe. <laughs> Matt listens to nothing but what? Cotton Eye Joe. What's funny? <laughs> nothing. Why are you laughing? I'm just having a good time talking about Raycons and how great they are and how much we use them. Especially since they have three customizable sound profiles, earbud tap functions, noise isolation, and awareness mode. So, go to buyraycon.com slash supermega today to get 15% off your Raycon order. That's buyraycon.com slash supermega to score 15% off. Buyraycon.com slash supermega. Yep. Oh. oh, dude, look at that. That's that's pretty nice. Those nipples are rock hard. Oh, you can almost see her pussy there. You can almost see her pussy. Just about. You can almost see her pussy. I can make out the brown of her labia. Yep. Through the sensor. Yep. Wow, dude, that's a that's a crazy sex position too. Look at those tits, man. Ooh, there's cum. You can see that there's cum coming out of her pussy. Uh. Don't Welcome keep, don't keep that in Luke. back. What? I don't keep that in Luke. Welcome back. Um, Everyone, we were just reading some... Uh, Gatsby. Some Gatsby. Sorry, we get distracted when we read. You know us boys. Reading all the time. Mm -hmm. We're well... We're, we're learned men. We are very learned men. Learned scholars. Yeah. Hair's pissing me off today, man. What? Sorry. Do you see a... <laughs> Did you see a fucking poofing up over here? I have a hat on. <laughs> Man. I just rewatched Scott Pilgrim vs. the World for the first time. He's talking time. about his hair, ladies and gentlemen. Matt is talking about his hair and how it's pissing him off. Should I go K-pop? I like that. K-pop mode? Yeah, you like it? You like the, like the... I think, I think people like K-pop mode. All right, I'm going K-pop mode then. It's going to be shaggy. And I rewatched Scott Pilgrim and I... Uh, dude, dude, put your... Sh Luke, make sure you censor Ryan's feet while they're out of his shoes because... People don't get that for free. Yeah. Uh, but basically, uh, just Scott Pilgrim, I rewatched that movie for the first time in like eight years maybe. That shit, that shit holds up. It's funny. The editing's crazy. And I love the, just the running gag about when someone says his hair is shaggy and it cuts back and he has a hat on instantly. <laughs> yeah. I love I Michael Sarah. Uh, his movies, not Michael Sarah. Edgar Wright. I watched Hot Fuzz like a few days ago. Love Hot Fuzz. It's still great. Still love it. Last time I saw it was with you and Markiplier. Dude, uh, the greater good. I don't remember. Yarp. I don't remember. Um, uh, piss taker. Don't remember any of it. I do remember, however. Uh, You've got a mustache. I know. <laughs> I don't remember any of that. Uh, I, I, you could be making shit up right now, and I wouldn't know. Are you making shit up? Mm -mm. I haven't seen Shaun of the Dead. I've seen Hot Fuzz. Shaun of the Dead's good, too. I think it's... <sighs> Yeah, it's probably my second. Hot Fuzz is my favorite out of the trilogy, the Cornetto trilogy. I've seen World's End, at World's End. I like that one. I like that one a lot, too. It was pretty good. It's funny. Very funny. If there's one thing you can you can rely on Edgar Wright for, it's a, a, a decently edited movie. Editing's great. <sighs> it's fast-paced. I remember it's... not liking his most recent movie that much. Baby Driver? No, no, no. He did uh, something after that with like Anya Taylor Joyce and 
forget her name, but the actress from uh, Jojo Rabbit. Oh, that's right. I didn't see it. What was that movie called? Can't believe you didn't see they it. They used Downtown uh, in the trailer. That's downtown. right. Downtown. You know, some shit like that. I was thinking of that song. It's like, downtown. Yeah, that one. Dun, 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 dun. Which the guy that uh, blew up his RV in Nashville in front of the yep. AT&T building played that out loud from Nothing his... Nothing to do with the movie, though. Right. I'm just saying. I'm sorry if I've been bringing him up a lot. So I... It's fine. He was a personal hero of yours. Not a personal well, you don't need Hero, to be bashful maybe. now. He's not, he's not around anymore, so he's not going to hear this. Yeah, that's true. Well, I, I don't really have anything bad to say about him. Other than what he, he probably what, shouldn't have, he, shouldn't have blown himself up it, on, on Christmas. He probably shouldn't have committed terrorism in a, in a, in a high, dense That city. word is thrown around so so lightly <laughs> these days, Brian. Well, Do, uh, yo, domestic yo, terrorism. You bomb a city street and all of a sudden you're a domestic terrorist? You, you fill your RV with C4, <laughs> click the detonator and blow yourself up with no regard for possibly killing other people? Blowing up the AT and T um, building. He had a warning that said, "Please get away from the area. I'm That's, about to explode." He saved people's lives with that. He's a hero. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm gonna blow up. You have uh, 30 seconds. He had he had it on Braille on the side of the RV too. Really? So, if so people follow the vibrations. They could. If any uh, mm. if any blind person stumbled onto that street and was like, "Ah, oh, fuck! I lost my glass." Well, I guess glasses wouldn't make a difference. Yeah. They, I lost my cane. They go up to the side of the RV and they're like, I, "This music." They follow the music. It sounds nice, and they're feeling the side of it, and they go. <gasps> Oh fuck! I and mean, they run away. So he saved lives. It's definitely not a thing where like you hear music coming from a truck. It's not something that you're like, oh, what's going on? Doesn't attract <laughs> attention for sure. No, he told people to go go away, dude. <laughs> I don't know why you're bashing him. He, go away. He can't defend himself, man. The man is the man is still warm in the grave, and you're over here ba fucking. Imagine a guy ba like balancing on like a circus ball while like hula hooping with like a C4 strapped to his chest <laughs> and fireworks going off. Like, look away. <laughs> You don't want to see this. <laughs> like a guy that's about to blow himself up, but he's like yeah. still really like. You don't want to see this. <laughs> yeah. Don't even look. He has like a giant kind of like what was the Uncle Sam hat or like like a jester's hat with little bells on it. <laughs> <laughs> he's juggling. Do not look. You're not gonna want to see what's gonna Get happen. Get away. <laughs> go. <laughs> Just go. And then uh yeah, boom, kaboom. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah, uh, Lex, uh, our friend Lex, she she heard the that thing explode because she lives in Nashville. Well, she lived in Nashville, and now uh, she's she was sitting at home, and then she heard boop, and then her uh, a little lower frequency than that, but yeah. Well, I don't want to get picked up by the uh, YouTube like sensor stuff. If you say boom too much, if you say it too no, if you say it too low, they'll mm. they'll think that you're showing a video of an explosion. You know, I can do a really good explosion yeah. sound effect, so I, I just didn't want to do it like that. Trying to trying to save our monetization a little bit. You know, you know who was really good at mimicking gunfire sound effect? Who? Tarzan. Was he from Disney's Tarzan? I haven't seen Disney's Tarzan in quite some time. I don't really remember the plot of it that well. He thinks does he fuck Jane Goodall in it? No, no, he does develop a relationship with Jane, but they don't fuck in the movie. In the first one. Um, At least not on camera. But you Is it Jane Goodall? Is it supposed to be her? No, I don't think it's supposed to actually... I think it's, you know, they named her Jane and kind of like, oh, like Jane Goodall, the, the ape lady. The ape lady? Or maybe lady? Tarzan and Jane, that's, like a, that's a famous lady. thing from the stories. She might Tarzan... have been ugly, dude, but calling her the ape lady is definitely <laughs> a bridge too far. The, the Tarzan was a story before Disney took it. Same with Mulan, <laughs> took bitch. <it. laughs> Yeah, they did. They took it. And Peter Pan. Lion King? And Cinderella. Oh, yeah. What Did Disney just, like, was this stuff just, like, public domain? And they're like, we're going to, or they just, did they just, like, buy the rights to it's all this shit? Now. Yeah. I don't know. That's what, I, I didn't realize this until recently. That's why they're doing all these live action remakes of all these properties, like Lion King and, um. Dumbo. Dumbo. Gumbo and, uh, what's the new one they're doing? The Tim Burton's Dumbo. What's the new one they're doing? Matt, odds are you have to watch Tim Burton's Dumbo tonight. <sighs> I have plans tonight, dude. Will you stay up? <laughs> okay. Within the next three days. Okay, that's fair. So that's the next three nights. 20. 3, 2, 1, 19. Six. Thank fuck God, you. dude. I did not want to have to watch that. I've seen clips Burn from it. Out. Fuck you. I liked uh, the cartoon one because it had a train in it. 
If, when I was a kid, if something had a train in it, that's all that fucking mattered to me. Like, it, I, I was sold. Trains are kind of scary, though. They're big. In real they made, life, yeah. They made big noise, too. In real life, trains are horrifying. It, they, think about, like, it's it's such a, it's just a massive machine of, of boiling oil and steam and moving loud parts. sounds. And just, yes, yeah, moving parts. And get your fingers cut in that. Like, honestly, like, you can easily get, get a pretty nasty cut from one of those moving parts. Yeah. Some people have gone through worse with trains, but yeah, definitely a finger cut would hurt. Have you ever had a paper cut, Ryan? Yeah, it stinks. I actually listen, dude. You get hit by a train, you're not gonna feel it. If you get your finger trapped in a fucking piston, you're gonna feel that. it. Right on the inseam of one of my. Ooh. I was opening up like a you know one of those, those like like a plastic thing that would have like a pair of scissors or like a measuring tape in it. Right. Oh yeah. And I was like ripping that, and all of a sudden, <laughs> just... dude, those things will fucking. I don't know, like, com- like things like computer mouses and shit. Like, they put them in that that like hard plastic packaging. Then when you bust, like, you cannot open that shit easy. And if you try to rip it open, that's worse than a paper cut. Is it it those plastic cuts because that's that's a full on slice. Because our hands are so dainty that if you have a cut on like your palm or the inside of your hand at all, you feel that. Anybody want to read my palms? How are my palms doing? When you want to read them? Do you one of your little psychic things, you know? There they are. It's my fucking palms. You got big hands, Ryan. They're the same size as your hands. I don't think so. I think they're the same fucking size. See? Yours are bigger. Are we sure that yeah. I light it up? Yours are bigger for sure. By like half a centimeter. Not like a millimeter. Still bigger. Not a millimeter, dude. I could see noticeable difference. Could they? If could we the had audience? A, if we had a hand crushing contest, you would crush my hands. I'm not going to say anything there. We've arm wrestled before. <laughs> yeah, how'd that go? I don't know. Now with my back, who knows? I mean, there is a ladder, like a step ladder with a piece of wood on top of it right there. It's almost like it was meant for arm wrestling. You want arm wrestle? Sure. Is that, I, that's for one of the microphones, but is that not also like a perfect arm wrestling table? Yeah. I mean, I'm, hold up. <sighs> yeah, that's perfect. Bring that over here. No, no, leave that on, because then the wood will fall off. Oh, will it? Yeah. I'm a bit of an engineer. Does that work? Yeah. Here, let's... Let's do it like... Uh, put it like this. Okay. Sorry, audio listeners. You guys can suck our asses. Yeah, we'll try to give you uh, live updates. Okay. Ah! What? Did you get a... I know, I just touched it. Because of that... Oh, the paper cut, yeah. The plastic cut. Plastic cut. All right, let's, uh... Are we gonna hold... Do we hold on to the table? I'm just putting my hand there for support. I mean, it's, it, is that cheating? I don't know. Does that, like... Do, do you think that if I... you get support. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. Okay, yeah, so hands just on the leg, I yeah. guess. Uh, all right, so I'm looking for a good, clean fight. Good, clean fight. Good, clean fight. Uh, all right. Ready? Three, two, one, go. <laughs> It's a good battle. Oh. Uh, I feel like my wrist is gonna snap, so I'm just gonna give up. <sighs> Dude, you scuffed up my elbow. Dude, you fu- Whoa. What the- what f- Just because I was on the edge. Oh. Dude, are you okay? That looks pretty painful. <sighs> yeah, a man can deal with the pain. I'm a man. Well, you, you won fair and square, Ryan. Good job. I put on a good fight, though, didn't I? You did. You did. It was a good fight. You're a strong man. That, uh, that was, that hurt. I actually, I had to give up because, like, I could feel the tension forming in my wrist and getting stronger, and it, it actually felt like I was like, what if I keep doing this, and all of a sudden just... Oh, you've seen those videos seen of people videos. arm wrestling, and then, oh, their arm bends, oh. I, I was feeling... There's one with a woman that right I remember. Here. Right here. A fucking woman. A it, stupid fucking woman. In a sport? Yeah, hold up. You haven't seen this? I've, oh, I've seen plenty of videos where the arm just goes... There's like one famous one with some lady arm wrestling in it. Ow. Hurt my wrist, man. I kind of don't want to. I'll watch it. Are you going to look it up? Sure. What? Look up a dumb woman gets her arm broken by big strong man? Sure. I might have been another woman. Let me, uh, let me, let me look this shit up. Woman arm wrestling... Uh, break. 
Is it this one? No. Oh, I found it. I found it. It's this one. I don't want to watch this. The viewers can watch it. Nice. I like the trap remix of Crazy Train. Wow. Did you see that? Oh, I I felt that. Yeah. I could hear it. I could I could see it. I could I could almost taste it. That was fucking that, intense. That's what we were about to do to ourselves. Yeah, because once you get to that point, dude, my like it wasn't even my wrist right here. It was like right here where and that part doesn't bend. This part this part does. But this part right there, that would suck, man. If I fucking busted my busted my wrist, all from a little bit of arm wrestling. When are they gonna put that in the Olympics? Arm wrestling? Yeah. I feel like there's like actually like leagues of arm wrestling. There's that leagues, take it seriously. But it's not an Olympic sport. There's slapping leagues. You've seen those. <sighs> yeah, and it's not in the Olympics. I do love boxing's the in the Olympics. It's the closest. Is, it? I... is skateboarding in the Olympics? I think so. <clears throat> the X Games. Is pegging? No. Peggle is though. Yeah, Peggle. They China has got a good team with Peggle. They fucking crushed it at the 2020 Summer Olympics. It's days like these, I curse the Chinese for inventing gunpowder. <laughs> Easily the best part of episode one of the rehearsal. Yeah, that was a quote from a show. It's well, it's also my own personal sentiments. Yeah, the Chinese did invent gunpowder, and look at what it's done to the world. You know. And for some reason, why are guns such an American ideal? Seems like uh, the far the far right are just right people in general. The people who who love their guns for s self defense and hunting. Pfft. What's wrong with loving firearms? It sounds like they just love the Chinese. It sounds like they're worshiping the Chinese for their gunpowder. Is all I'm saying. I would worship the Chinese if they didn't invent gunpowder. <laughs> I thought you were just gonna stop there. I would worship. And I the worship Chinese. the Chinese. Hold on, I'm playing with my gun. Just be careful. You gotta. It's a fucking. Chambers open. It's a gun. Yeah. It's not a pair of scissors. It's fine. I'm not gonna hurt myself with it. I'm not gonna run with it. So when the chamber is open, that's what it's called, right? When the chamber the chamber is open. Yeah. Okay. There is one locked and loaded in the chamber. Okay. Actually, I'm just gonna. It looks cooler this way. Like it's longer. It's like you extend it. You know. Anyway, when's the last time you shot a gun? When I was in high school, I shot like a bolt action rifle. <laughs> shot and a bolt action rifle? Yeah. Like a musket? Yeah. Did it you was, have to like stick the, the sounding thing no, down? No, I in just there? had to, you just had to do that thing. They, the guns are well maintained. It wasn't like an actual like musket, musket. It was just a rifle that had a bolt action. I went shooting like over a little over a year ago with my me me padre in South Carolina. Shot some handguns and you know, I stood there fucking pa 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 get the bad guys. Well, your 44 you know? magnums or whatever the fuck. I don't know what they were. <laughs> there was a Glock. Okay. I don't know what standard the, issued like police basically handgun. like this the same one that we have the prop one mm -hmm. and then another one my dad had another one that was like smaller for concealed carry. So if you guys ever see my dad in public, don't. Your dad likes those types of guns. Don't go. He does little like little ankle guns. guns. Yeah, my dad likes the little the pop little pimp guns. I don't want him to go boom. I want him to go pop. That's what he says. <laughs> he goes, Matthew. I don't like a big boom. I like a little pop. Because he is a little pop. Yeah. He's my he's my pops. Well, he talks like he is because he's because because he has a lot of uh, opinions. And all I'm saying is, I think those opinions are masking something. That's all I'm gonna oh, say. Oh, one hundred percent. Yeah, one hundred percent. And I mean, you and I, I'm not going to get into it, but we, we know what they're masking. We've seen those yearbook photos. I've seen the yearbook photos. That's not even a joke, that one. Uh-uh. The yearbook photo is my father. I found my dad's yearbook from, like, the 70s. Boy Love Club? What is that? <laughs> God damn it, dude. I wanted to keep a straight face when you said that so bad, and I just couldn't. Boy Love Club. <laughs> It's like before they got like they got their like men's rights activists before that became the term. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I'm gonna. Have, I'm glad I've tickled your tummy with this one. <laughs> <laughs> the idea of like a men's rights club being called Boy Love Club. <laughs> Boys Love Club. <laughs> Boys Love Club. We gotta love ourselves. <laughs> Boys Love Club. <laughs> some people some people in the room, some shady figures kind of step out and leave when they figure out like oh, never mind. <laughs> uh, Not what I was thinking. I've been waiting for one of these for a long time. So, t- so today we're gonna be talking about how to stand up for yourself in a world that's nowadays run by women. <laughs> Oh, maybe, well, maybe he's just leading into something. <laughs> I, I just like big, strong men. Mm. All of us here. Boys. Deep right. and down boys? inside, we're big, yeah, strong yeah, men. We're all big boys. Oh, yeah. Big boys. <laughs> okay. Getting somewhere. Oh, we're getting somewhere. <laughs> boys love <laughs> Got a little, Ryan, congratulations, buddy. You officially got a tear out of my eye. <gasps> Thank you. I always love to make you. That laugh. was such a big tear that it took all four fingers to wipe it. I had to do one, two, three, and four. And who knows? There might still be a little left over for next time. I hope so. So next next joke, the 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 wheels are already well greased. This I microphone. Lo- I love getting getting you wet, man. You do, man. But real talk in my dad's yearbook, like there's a lot of pictures of my dad, um, and various clubs, and he's just like the only one that's shirtless. He's just shirtless in like all the pictures. He's the guy that like goes, "Yeah, let's. We can all do it." No, we're good. No, come on. But now that he has his shirt off, he's like, "Ah, oh, y'all are being weird." He doesn't want to. If he backs down, then it then it, then it's weird. So he he's insults like, his manhood. And also, also everyone's gonna be like, "That was weird." Then he put his shirt back on, and that was just cringe. He didn't follow through, so he has to follow through. At Which least. I'm sure your dad, and you, and I, all don't have manhoods. What does that mean? We don't you mean have a, a hood. manhood? We don't have a hood. Like a clitoral hood? No. What are you talking like about? Like our foreskin. Oh! I don't know what my that first was thought was. unrightfully and forcibly taken from us. We can't enjoy sex like, like, like the normal man. You know, you, when, I, you know when, I, when I look at my parents, I just want to do this. <sighs> you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. For those audio listeners, that was me cocking the gun. And, shooting and then pretending to dead. shoot my parents dead for uh, forcibly uh, and unconsentingly removing my foreskin. Do you, ever wish, do you wish you had a foreskin? No. I don't know. I would like to have my foreskin let me, like, masturbate with it for a week and then see if I like it. Well, you know, like, 90% of the nerve endings in the penis are in the foreskin. So, technically, sex and stuff is a lot more pleasurable. That's, what, you, I, yeah, yeah. that's what I was... I would prefer to have... Well, I, see, I don't know. I'd prefer to have a choice. How about that? I would have preferred yes. to have the choice. I'd rather I'd rather my parents wait until I'm nine or ten and I can make that choice. People are talking about how women got their got their rights revoked. Well, how about our rights? Men's rights. Oh, oh, boohoo! You can't kill somebody. Okay, guess what? I want my damn foreskin. Our 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 parents can legally and forcibly cut off our foreskin. Think what do you think it. of that, women? I feel like that's the next step for Jordan Peterson. And all those toxic women out there laughing at the thought of us having to go through turmoil. <laughs> Fuck you. Guess what? Sorry. You, you, women, you will never know the fucking pain of a man that a man feels on a daily basis, but also in terms of, of, of having my choice taken away from me. Well, it's, it's easy to understand a woman, but a woman will never understand a man. Nope. And we'll talk more about this after the ad break. Mm. That is lovely. That's great. Great Prosecco. If you haven't heard already, it's Smooth Sack Summer. That's right, Smooth Sack Summer. I'm talking about your testicles. When you're playing in the summer sun, make sure you're scaped from pubes to bum. That's right, this is the summer to keep your balls cool while still looking hot with Manscaped. The leader in below-the-belt grooming is making sure we all have a ball this summer by giving our pants partners everything they need to stay fresh. Dive headfirst into Smooth Sack Summer by going to manscaped.com for 20% off plus free shipping with our code SUPERMEGA. Listen, there's nothing I hate more than uh, having a big bush, right? So uh, that's why I use the Manscaped uh, 4.0 package, uh, the performance package 4.0, to to keep, keep, that, keep that stuff top-notch. Ryan, would you mind taking a little look for me and telling me what you see below the belt? Oh, a beautiful, uh, a really well-shaven package. That's right. Pretty well-shaven. In fact, not a single Balls and shaft, by the Balls way. Balls and shaft. Looking really and neat. 
and and pubis region too. Not a single nick, not a single, not a single tear. It's all it's all great. The Manscaped Performance Package 4.0 has everything you need to prepare this summer bod. Inside this package, you'll find their Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, Weed Whacker Ear and Nose Hair Trimmer, Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant, Crop Reviver Toner, Performance Boxer Briefs, and a travel bag to hold all those goodies you got. Their Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade, no pun intended, to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin safe technology. The Lawnmower 4.0 has a 7,000 RPM motor, a new multi function on off switch that can engage in a travel lock, and gives you the ability to turn their 4,000K LED spot light on and off when needed for a more precise shave. And did I mention this trimmer is waterproof too? You can use it in the shower like your old man Matt Watson. Now that you have the perfect haircut, use Manscaped's liquid formulations to keep that freshness even at the hottest BBQs. Most importantly, use the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant to stay cool in the heat. With a soothing aloe vera formula, it's the best in the business for below the waist freshness and this clear drying formula will keep looking good while smelling good. They even threw in two free gifts to their Performance Package 4.0, the Manscaped Boxers and the Shed Travel Bag that will bring your comfort to another level. Also, wearing sandals with some nasty toenails during the summer months? Ew! Take a look at the Shears 2.0, a luxury nail grooming kit. You're gonna love it. Trust me. So, get 20% off plus free shipping with the code SUPERMEGA at manscaped.com. That's 20% off plus free shipping with the code SUPERMEGA at manscaped.com. It's smooth sack summer, boys. Get on board or get left behind. Hey, dude, watch this. Whoa! Matt just did a little gun trick. We're back from the ad break. We are? Yeah. Oh, okay. Check it out. <laughs> you did it again. I didn't know you put it back in. Guess what? What? No eyes this time. A pro. Yeah. Can you catch this without looking? Fuck! You know what? <laughs> I would have. It's close. I, I would have, but my problem with catching things a lot is this, is that instead of trying to catch, I you end up swat swatting it away. That's what they teach you in baseball. You don't want to come. You let the ball come to you. Here, give me, you don't give me another one. Bad at it. You let it come to you. Give me another one. Closer. Closer. Yes. Give me another one. Okay. No eyes. Oh, that was a clean ass catch. That was. I was heard. It, I heard. Clean, I heard dude? the. Look at that. Of it landing in your palm. Take a take a look at that, ladies and gentlemen. Can we get an instant replay, Luke? Luke, put a slow motion. You're Thank right. you. There it Thank is. Thank you. And guess what, audio listeners? <laughs> Y'all can suck it. Yeah, suck our fat. <laughs> Y'all can't even see me lighting the slider. You can hear it. But you can't see it. Bleep that out, Luke. Um, I said, uh, suck our fat paychecks because we're so rich. That's not true. You know, with the stuff well, going on. Well, it's the on. image that you put out there. The image that you put out there is is what becomes reality. Yeah, we're rich as fuck. Million, million dollars in my bank account just sitting there. Me too. Million, million dollars with in nothing mine. to do. He needs more friends. I think I'm giving him another million. Hey, man, you want some? I know some friends. You can, you can borrow some of my friends. Yeah, maybe two million or three million. Yeah, you can, you can have a couple, couple three or four million of my friends. That's the goal, though, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it may not seem like it, but we are ravenously trying to just become millionaires. And uh, once we get our millions, we're dipping from this fucking shindig, honestly. You know, some would say that we could have done it by now, right? Yeah. Seven, six years? Well, people would at least expect us to, if not a million dollars, then a million subscribers. subscribers right. Um, What's that? I mean, that's y'all's fault. That's not our fault. Yeah. We don't control our subscriber account. That's that's your fault for not telling more of your friends and your family about us. Go go, call up your family. Call up your aunt. Call up some relatives you haven't talked to in a while and tell them all about, hey, I just found this wacky new YouTube channel. And these guys are funny stuff. I'll tell you what. These guys are act actually probably the funniest thing I've ever seen. This side of the Hudson. The right side of the Hudson is incredibly small compared to the left side of the Hudson because it's the corner of the country. So you <laughs> right side of the Hudson, you know. <laughs> but we're on the left side. We're on the good side of the Hudson. Actually, that's better than Mississippi because that means our competition is much less, right? Yeah. No, 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 no. That means our competition. I'm just agreeing with you. Okay. I'm not thinking about it. I'm sorry. I, I'm. I'm I, I hear you and I listen to you when you talk, but sometimes I uh, just kind of. I'm just over. I think I'm just. I'm just doing doing what doing what us white boys do best and overthink things. Hey. What? Oh, again? Uh huh. Oh, but it was aimed well. Yo, that was a great aim, and, it, and it, it went right here. But again, I think the problem was the last second I did this, I pushed it. So I pushed it, and I go to grab it, and it's already flying out of my out of my hand. I'm out of water. You're out of water? Yeah. What, do you want to go get some? Can we um, cut to Luke's uh, iPhone health tips? Now, they're not 
tips for health for your iPhone. They're just tips for your health filmed on his iPhone. Yeah, he was asking us to buy him a camera, and I said, well, as a podcast editor, Luke, I don't know if you need a camera. Yeah. And he wanted a Black Magic, which, you know, those can f- f- go up to, what, $7,000? Yeah. So, so I said, throw up a, throw up a, a health tip as I go get yeah. some more water. I'll go pee. Uh, here's Luke's uh, health tip number one, everybody. Hey, guys. Welcome to episode one of Luke's iPhone health tips. Today we'll be discussing the benefits of menthol and cigarettes. Um, menthol is a natural crystal from the earth that counteracts the cancerous properties of tobacco. Um, it makes cigarettes 50% healthier and perfectly makes them nearly, uh, actually healthy. So please make sure you are buying a Camel Crush when you are purchasing cigarettes. Thank you. That is all for Luke's iPhone health tips, episode one. So you kind of like... Yeah, I see. See right there. It's definitely red. Yeah, so. Okay. Just, I'll put some cream on it in the next, we just end in like 10, 15 or in 10, 15 minutes or so. Yeah, do I need to worry? If you could help apply it, because I know that you just have better eyes than I do and making sure that it's like well I don't applied. have better eyes. I have to wear glasses. You'll be closer. You'll is... be closer to the situation. I can't bend down that far. I'll be, uh, I'll be in the situation room. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you enjoyed uh, Luke's iPhone health tips. Yep, that's a new segment that we're starting that probably won't continue after today, but we're giving it a shot. We're seeing how he does. Uh, if he pulls in the numbers, he can have his own show. We'll see, guys. Sound off in the comments if you want some more Luke's Luke's health uh, Luke's iPhone health tips. Yep, not tips for your iPhone. Nope. Tips not for tips you. for like battery life or anything like that. Tips for your health. Yes, film that's a, that's from a his deal. iPhone. Yeah. All right. Um, is there anything, uh, exciting? Hold up. Let me, let me check. Anything exciting? <sighs> Destroy All Humans 2 Reprobed comes Ryan, out this- in 14 days. It's probably out or about to be out by the time this drops. Yeah. Well, from when we're recording this, it's 14 days exactly. Comes out in two weeks. Saints Row comes out in a week. The remake or whatever, Ooh. I think. Is it just I just a- haven't seen that much marketing for it. Is it a remake of the original? It's not like a remake. It's not. They're just starting over. They're just like, yeah, you know, just we're re- we're redoing this shit, like a revamp, like a reimagining. I've been what... wanting to recently restart some old games like? instead of playing new ones. Uh, I really want to start uh, Link's Awakening over and okay. actually beat the Switch one this time. The my... game is charming as hell. <laughs> my Sea of Thieves addiction is still persistent. So that's really the only game that I need. How many right hours now. you got in that? At this point, I can I can tell you. Tell you tell me the exact number. Yeah. Do you want to get your calculator so you, so you can see how many days I've spent? Yeah. Hold you on. know me. Okay, I gotta get on the. Yeah, get on your damn Steam app, the, brother. The Xbox app, okay? Because it tracks your total hours. Steam only tracks the hours in Steam. <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> oh my god, it's just fucking <coughs> vile and childish, and, and I love it. I love every every oh, little bit of it. You're actually going to have to do math, because it tells me how many days, but it doesn't tell me how many hours. Oh, okay, I'll, I'll do the math for you. So, right now, it's 55 days, 38 minutes. You're fucking with me. No. I've sailed over 3 million uh, uh, meters. In the game, I guess. Do you want to know what it is in hours or minutes? Hours. Okay, hours. It's a little over 1,375. <laughs> okay. Now, okay. minutes is going to be 82,500 minutes. <clears throat> 55 yeah. days? Yeah. Do you ever leave your comp- like the game open? Uh, I'm sure there were some times where I would, but let's let's say that I did that like a handful of times, and that added up to being let's say, let's be generous and say 20 hours. Like how how much does that really take off of play time? Hey, if you play, uh, you're really close to five million seconds. Oh shit! Of play time. How much? How much more do I gotta play? A little less than fifty thousand. Okay. Exactly. A little less than fifty thousand minutes. Seconds. Seconds. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah, and then you're going to be at 5 million seconds played. 
How much? Wait, how so much? I love this game. It's called Sea of Thieves. It is my World of Warcraft. People are obsessed with World of Warcraft. People are obsessed with a lot of fucking games. This is my obsession. And I love it. It's great. It's a new adventure each time. I come across some assholes sometimes, and I come across some decent people who are nice. Sometimes there's a good fight with a sore loser or a sore winner. You it's need whatever. To, you need to play 277.777778 hours to, to reach oh, shit. 5 million. I'll get there soon. Or I did my math completely wrong, which is, is not out of the realm of possibility in the slightest. The game's also been out for four years. That doesn't really help my case that much. It's been out for four years? Yeah. Damn. I didn't it's, know that. But I played it a, a good bit at the start. Cause I, cause I played with uh, Ding Dong, uh, for a little bit, and for one of their main updates where they introduced the Megalodon, the Hungering Deep update. So I played that with him, and he helped me see the Megalodon and do all that for the first time, which was awesome and great. Our, uh, I love Ding Dong. What a Ding, great, Ding Dong's a great, great guy. He's a great guy. You know, a oh, boy. Sorry, boy. I don't even want to talk about his age. Mm. He doesn't make that public. <sighs> But I will be going to his 16th. You were invited? Were you? Mm. Were you not? I wasn't either. I was just kidding. Oh, <laughs> okay. As long as you're kidding. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Why are you so scared of the ocean? Is it sharks, mainly? Is it drowning? Uh, I think it's... I'm more scared of drowning than I am sharks. But when I'm in the water, I still... <laughs> the The most pressing feeling I have is like a sudden it's just that like unknowing feeling of knowing that I'm in a, in a body of water where there are it's an ecosystem and there's a food chain and I'm not at the top of it mine is just that I've told you time and time again, I don't belong there so like I'm very much like not in my what about like realm of what I, like are you scared of flying we don't belong in the sky yeah but I'm like I'm in an airplane and I'm sitting down. You're in your bathing suit. In the I'm not like actually flying in the air. That's true. Like when you're swimming, you're just out there. And basically when you're swimming in the ocean, you're just kind of like floating at the surface. You might dive down you're and bait. have a little fun. You're literally bait. You're just, you're sitting there floating, splashing around, drawing attention to yourself. <laughs> no. Yeah. You know? Or even like the thing that I hated uh, was when I used to go to Sunset Beach uh, when I was a kid and I would, it would be... Like in the shallow waters, or sometimes we'd go out in kind of like the swampy areas, uh, past the dunes before they block those off. And it's just like accidentally stepping on a crab, and all of a sudden it starts scuttling, like pinching at your feet, and then it like they fucking chase you afterwards. They I do. Remember, they're, they're angry like, little bitches. I'm like boom, boom, doing like the moon, like a moonwalk essentially, or a moon run, a, run, a moon gallop, you're, you're, trying you're, to you're, get away. But I feel it like r just running after me. Dude, why are they such assholes? Time. Like I don't they, know. Like I'm getting away. I'm you running kill away. It. You can kill it in one stop. I can just and, done. And instead, it's like, oh, this guy made a mistake. Let me fucking really piss him off and attack him and scare him because you're not even gonna kill him out of anger. You're gonna kill him out of straight fear, yeah. right? Because you're gonna be fucking stomping your feet. I I, I remember. Uh, I went home recently, and I went to the. I would walk on the beach at night because it was way too hot during the, the day. The ghost crabs. Oh yeah, dude, I love. And you flash your flashlight in their face on your cell phone, and they freeze, and you pick them up. <laughs> you go, that's what that's what's happening to them. Essentially, yeah. If you live in the southeast on the beach, at least in Charleston in South Carolina, I don't I don't know about the rest of the coast. Probably all this lower southeast, but there's ghost crabs. These little white crabs that are like this big. And if you turn on your flashlight at night on the beach. You'll see one, they're very calm, running around. If you run up to it really fast and put your flashlight in its face, it just freezes. And you can, like, pick it up and put it in your mouth if you want and just kind of... Hmm. Oh, uh, dude, I don't know what it is. Like, I'm such a little bitch. I ordered soft shell crab at uh, Kuda. Mm -hmm. uh, and it came out. And usually, like, they take it apart for you, so it's just, like, little chunks or whatever. But this time, and this... Wait, this, they have crab there now? Uh, like, like, uh... You know, where it's, like, deep-fried, I guess. Oh, okay. But it comes out as, like, the whole crab deep-fried. And I'm just like... Whoa, what? And I'm just kind of like... uh, Like, I still ate it. But, like, there's something uncomfortable if Wait, I can still see the shape not, of what it was when it was alive. Because I'm a hypocrite. They're not frying anything edible, though. The huh? shell's not edible. They're not frying anything edible. So why would they deep-fry the whole thing and not the edible? That's like... that's like I ate the claws. Like the shell? Yeah. Oh, you're actually, you know, it's soft shell. You're right. You can't eat it. Yeah. I want crab now. But I still saw its guts when I bit into it. 
Like some yellow shit? Yeah. It's the thing about shrimp, too. They have that, like, shit thing, mm. you know? The lining of their intestines? Yeah, I'm not a is fan Is that really of what that. that is, or is that just something to gross people out? That's what I've always been told. By who? <sighs> My mother. <laughs> and I, I know she would never lie to me. Who's that bitch now? Excuse me? That bitch? She's my bitch, Ryan. Is the black thing on shrimp poop? That's, the impression that's the... in my bed says different. The black lines and shrimps are part of the animal's digestive system. They are also known as sand veins, which look like thin black ribbons. The shrimp's sand veins can be completely or partially filled with things it ate, so those black lines are, in fact, bowels filled with feces. So... Shrimp are pretty gross. That's disgusting. It is, right? But we eat that shit up. And I, Coconut you, shrimp from Bubba Gump's? You ain't gonna stop me from eating that shit. Ever. Th- thank you. Sorry. It's not good for my back. Bend over. Well, I, didn't, I didn't tell you to pick it up. I was just trying to be a good friend. The audio listeners will not be able to see how many times on this podcast I've taken this gun out, dropped the clip out, and caught it without even looking. Or how many times I've done this. Yeah, you're going to have to see the video portion to see what I'm talking about. Don't tell him what I did. Here. I'll do it again. Here, Luke, you can put in a sound effect of what, what, you, what, what you think that represents to the audio listeners. Exactly. And then they won't even get to see this. Nope. I mean, <laughs> I'm not sure if you want them to. Yeah, it's better off maybe if they don't. You can keep listening to it on Spotify. You know, what's wild is uh, now that we do it on YouTube, our views are up on YouTube, but our that means our listens on streaming services are down. <sighs> and the uh, advertisers tend to go by the numbers on streaming services. So, so you guys could, you know, bump our numbers. We're making less money by doing the video version of the <laughs> podcast. So if you guys maybe wanted to just mail us a $5 bill. Yeah. Actually... A uh, gift card. A Visa gift card. You can't mail money. Can you not mail money? Oh, shit. Wait, that's stupid. Is that really a law? You can't mail money? I'll put my it? fucking grandparents in jail for mailing me $5 on my, my birthday I know, like my family card. mails me money all the time. And I'll send, like, the IRS or whoever the fuck. <laughs> <is>. Ryan, <laughs> there's some people at the door. What did you say on your podcast? Uh, our whole family's being audited. <laughs> Find out that your family's been just laundering money for generations. <laughs> also, the other night I had a realization. Um, I took a pair of pants out of the washer to put them in the dryer, and I noticed that there was a $5 bill sticking out of my pocket that I would forgotten to take out somehow. Okay. And it was all wet. And I was like, oh, this is clean money. Call that money laundering. And then I was like, wait a second. Is it called money laundering because you're making your money clean? See what I'm saying? Okay. I never put that. I thought la- laundering was just like a legal term. You know, it's like, oh, like laundering. It's one of those things that like has nothing to do with the word laundry. I thought but it's because most of the time people did it through laundromats. They opened up a laundromat and that's how they laundered their money. Is it? I don't know. That's a great Your guess. way sounds way more plausible. Because it makes me think it's a term where it's like, oh, you're laundering your money because you're making your money clean. Right? Where... Because that's the whole point of money laundering is you're taking some dirty money and you're making it clean. Hey, dude, Luke just sent me a tweet on Twitter. Want to see what it is? Luke, look what you just sent me. Matt, dude, the term money laundering is said to have its origins from the mafia's ownership of laundromats in the U.S. in the 1920s and 1930s. No way. Really? Yeah, so my dumb little brain figured that one out. That's insane because, like, mine... No offense, sounds a lot more plausible. That's what I, yeah. Organized criminals were making so much money from extortion, prostitution, gambling, and bootlegging, they needed to show a legitimate source of the money, and so laundromats were... You ever thought about getting into extortion? You and I? I mean, we definitely have enough to extort someone. We could extort pretty much anyone we know. It's funny that extortion's illegal... Yeah. It's funny that blackmail is illegal, too. Is it? Mm-hmm. Wait, can you get in legal trouble for that? For blackmailing someone? Yeah. 
Blackmailing's not good. Might get a slap on the wrist. I mean, look at you. Look at your pigment. Yeah, first time offender. I'm I'm good. Not that I blackmailed anybody, but look Ryan, you on the other hand, I'm a whitey. I'm a whitey through and through. Look at these. That's true. You've got the you've got the kind of the auburn beard. Mm. But the second they sit you down in that courtroom and they find out that part of you is from the Middle East, <sighs> I'm done. You better. I'm gonna extort you with that. Straight to Azkaban. <laughs> Wait, <no. laughs> Straight to, straight to a, a, an actual... Ryan Elias McGee, I hereby <laughs> sentence you to 25 years in Azkaban. Bah! In fucking Guantanamo is that, probably a jail nope. that sounded better. Guantanamo is not a thing anymore. Yeah, but... Or isn't a or thing that's anymore. What they say, okay, yeah. it's off the books is what, they're, what yeah. they mean by that. There's no way the U.S. government's like, yeah, let's just shut it down. But we'll talk more about politics in the in the next episode of the uh, Super Mega Cast. I know it's everyone's favorite topic. So we're it, gonna get into it's it. It's gonna be the big. The next episode is gonna be the big politics episode. So that, get ready for no that. No one's gonna click that. Oh, here they go again. I think I think a lot of people are interested. Okay, next episode's the big politics episode. It's not really because we don't know when these episodes are coming out. You know what I'm saying? But now, so they, now they Luke do. is gonna have to title it the big politics episode regardless. He doesn't have to. If it's with. You know who it could be. He who shall not be named? Yeah. You want to try catching the clip? Ready? Three, two, one. <sighs> it's hard, right? Do it again. Another try? Here you go. Wanna... Luke, end it as soon as I catch it. <laughs> Fuck. <sighs> still still here? It? Yep, we're still here. We're still... <laughs> Matt and Ryan, that was not funny. But I love Super Mega. 